Greetings and salutations my friends. Today's video will be mostly of use to uh, people, both men and women, who have undergone the so-called bottom surgery recently. And the question is, where do you go from now when it comes to your hormones after you detransition? You know, a, lot, a lot of the time, after you go through the bottom surgery, you're being told that now you're a patient for life because you are required to take hormones for your health uh, for pretty much the rest of your life because your body no longer produces either testosterone or estrogen, right? Your gonads are gone. Boom, just like that, thrown out the window. Personally, I'm not taking any hormones right now. I'm not on testosterone and I'm not on estrogen. And this video is by no means meant as in advice on what you should do. I'm not going to tell you what you should do personally because uh, that is up to you. And I think the decision you make regarding hormonal treatment after you detransition, after the bottom surgery, it's something you should think carefully through and a lot of the time we didn't think the surgery carefully through and well look what it got us right <laughs> so I think after something like that you become very aware of looking at every single little detail of what you are doing to your body and uh, I think that's the attitude a hell, very healthy attitude um, one should go with, you know, but this is not a medical advice by any means. I am not a doctor or no, nothing like that. I'm not an endocrinologist. Now, in front of you, you have three roads. One requires you to take the hormones that are natural to your biological sex. Or you can continue taking cross-sex hormones or you might take the middle road and take both at the same time overdose on that shit and boom have a party no um you can take no hormones at all one thing straight off the bat there is no healthy solution there is no healthy choice truth is the damage has been done okay there is no taking it back no matter what you do, each choice you take at this point will do some damage to your body, to your health, and there's no escaping that. And I think accepting that is really, really important because you can't fool yourself that the choice you've made is something you can fix. There is, there is no fixing that. And I don't think one should fixate on this idea that you can fully fully go back to as you were especially not after you have gone through the surgery man <sighs> forget about it it's it doesn't have to be a negative mindset you know i mean sure it can be if you're thinking oh no not everything's lost right i can't possibly possibly go back but what i think is healthy is accepting reality for what it is right don't fix it, accept it, try to do the best out of your life that you have right now. You know, you can, you can still live a fulfilling life. So I'm going to discuss a little bit of every option and why I personally uh, make the choice that works for me. The first option is you transition mentally, you... Uh, Accept that you're, you're a guy or you're a woman and there's nothing you can do about it It's not something you can change, but you remain on cross-sex hormones in my case that would be an estrogen And I've stopped taking estrogen back in 2014 Approximately half a year after my surgery. I would lie if I said that I have never considered going back on estrogen for Couple of reasons actually. Uh, my skin was the most healthy it has ever been when I was an estrogen, which is great. When I was an estrogen, that was the only time in my life when I didn't struggle with dandruff. And I have really, really bad dandruff 
hatred most of my life. Basically ever since I was 12 or 13 I uh, suffered from that. I do it to this day and no matter what I try it doesn't go away. Sometimes it just gets more tolerable. So in that way going on estrogen would be beneficial, right? But then I look back at what the main side effect for me of being on estrogen was and I was brain fog and unless you want me to be as confused as Joe Biden then you probably wouldn't want me on estrogen. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Joe Biden's husband. <clears throat> and thank you uh, Dr. Pepper and thank you Chancellor, or Dr. Pepper. This is my little sister Valerie and I'm Jill's husband. Oh no, this is a, oh, you switched on me. And honestly, I no longer even consider it an option because my cognitive ability is very important to me. And you could say that uh, this decline in cognitive ability, uh, um, problems with the ability to focus are more associated with low testosterone than high estrogen. But the thing is, I have had low testosterone for like, most of my life in the last 10 years. And when I was not on estrogen, all this time, my cognitive ability, my memory, ability to focus, etc. has been absolutely perfect. So I have no complaints there. The only thing that messes up everything for me is estrogen. And I don't think this is the kind of side effect that will happen to everyone. I think everyone is affected by every single drug differently. And you know, it is not a natural hormone. It's not something your body produces. It is a synthetic drug that will mess you up one way or another. And a lot of the time we think of physical changes or physical side effects when it comes to cross-sex hormones. But we rarely mention the psychological changes that shit does to you. And honestly, estrogen, I remember, made me quite emotional, to be honest. And I don't want to go through that all over again, you know, so no SD for me. Option number two is uh, going on testosterone and I did so for a while, you know, mostly because of uh, the possibility of developing osteoporosis and that is probably one of the worst dangers of taking no hormones. Your bones will suffer for that and so if that is your main concern, you're worried about your bones, your skeleton, then taking hormones will probably be a good idea. I was on testosterone for two and a half years between uh, 2019 and 2020. And honestly, I had my last shot of testosterone in February 2022. I was both on the gel and uh, shots for a while. Uh, honestly, here's the thing. Y you've been told that if you're taking testosterone, your energy levels will improve, your mood will improve. And, you know, I didn't experience any of that, to be completely honest. It was shit. <laughs> I didn't notice any difference of any sorts when it comes to my mood or my energy levels. What actually helped me improve those things was working on my mental health and living an active life. Like, you want to have energy, do something. You know, the less you do something, the less energy you will have. What it did, however, is, well, I developed a skin rash. And I think sometimes you might see it on the camera. It's more visible in real life than on camera, but I have a skin rash on my face that started developing since I started taking testosterone. And the longer I kept taking testosterone, the worse it started getting. And pretty much since I stopped, the skin rash remained the same, but it didn't go away. There are side effects from taking synthetic hormones that are so much worse than the skin rash, you know. You um, have higher risk of stroke, you have higher risk of heart attack, and so on and so on. There's synthetic hormones cause brain swelling, you know. 
it's there's research to back up that it's not something I just pull straight out of my ass. Taking synthetic hormones can be quite dangerous and honestly I don't think it is a long-term solution. I don't think any human should be taking hormones, synthetic hormones, for the rest of their life. That will mess you up, trust me. You might be fine for a while, but you, you never know when your health will get really, really bad because of synthetic hormones. And I have heard the story of multiple times, and not even people who detransitioned because they found out it was the wrong choice for them, but people who later in life detransitioned because of health issues where they had to stop taking cross-sex hormones because it was messing up with their health. It's not a long-term solution, man. Taking testosterone, I found that to be annoying for many other reasons. Um, before I went on testosterone, I had... When I was on estrogen, my sex drive was pretty much non-existent. After I stopped taking estrogen and uh, I was no, no, no hormones at all for pretty much five years. That's when I had just a little bit of it. But when I went on testosterone, oh man, my sex drive went all the way up there, right? Uh, <laughs> not fun. For once, you know, once you're used to uh, not having m much of a sex drive, it can be really, really annoying. It wasn't pleasant news to get it back, not at all. It felt like I was 15 all over again. And, you know, a lot of the tissue that was used to create the so-called vagina out of your penis is still there. I would even say most of it, because I still get erections. But those erections happen now inside my body. That is one of the worst feelings ever to be honest not even in a painful way it can be it absolutely can be painful but it's it's not the worst pain but it's a massive massive discomfort and if you walk around with an erection inside your body all the time hell no hell no i was like there's there's no way i'm doing this i need to i need to stop taking testosterone because this shit is annoying you know not only that, but I also feel like I'm too old to be going through another puberty. And whenever you start taking new hormones, your body goes through puberty of sorts. And I have gone through my natural puberty. I have gone through uh, the so-called estrogen puberty. And I went through the testosterone puberty at the age of 27. Honestly, if I was to start taking testosterone all over again, I would go through puberty one more time. And at some point, you just have to stop. You have enough of it. I can't be bothered, to be honest. I'm not going through another puberty. Hell no. I'm way too old for that shit, you know. Pretty much for one and a half a year, I haven't been taking any testosterone. How does that make me feel, to be honest, much better? And how does it feel? Well, honestly, pretty good. Much better than I was on testosterone. My mood and my energy levels haven't changed. It's all, lo all looks pretty good, but I don't experience the discomfort I was talking about, which is a huge, huge relief, to be honest. I also haven't unusually high sex drive and you could say it's normal to have high sex drive during puberty but in my case yeah we're, we're talking horny all the time and I mean I could go at it five times in a row sometimes for eight hours <laughs> yeah yeah baby <laughs> yeah. hell no I'm too old for that shit, to be honest. Is be being on no hormones a healthy solution? No, I don't think so. In the long term, it's gonna do so damage. Uh, but <laughs> so, will, so will the hormones, you know? Those are synthetic hormones. They are not natural. And 
Testosterone is even worse. It's taking testosterone is worse for your health than taking estrogen. Like, you know, estrogen you can digest, you can take estrogen orally. Testosterone, you have to take shots or you have to apply gel on your skin because if that shit goes through your liver, you're a dead man. Either way, both estrogen and testosterone would do damage to your liver over time. So, like I said, it's not a long-term solution. And if you think you can live on that for the rest of your life, well, have fun. What happens when you're gonna need a new liver? Mm. You know, they say that having your gonads removed and being on no hormones shortens your life, right? So, can my lifespan be shortened? It's possible, it's likely that I will die younger than I would otherwise, but I think it's what you do with your life rather than how long you live. I'm old enough to know that a longer life isn't always a better one. If I live to my 50s, 60s, that's cool. If I live till I'm 100 years old, that's cool. But I think it's quality over quantity, to be honest. And the fact that you realized you might have a shortened lifespan because of the choice you made actually makes you appreciate the time you have here even more. But that doesn't have to be the case either, you know. Uh, do some research, like I said. Do some research before you make your decision whether you want to take estrogen and testosterone and hormones. And when I was doing research on uh, the no hormones route, yeah, that's, you know, when I was starting reading about eunuchs, historically speaking. And when you think of eunuchs, there were uh, choir boys in Europe who were castrates in order to still have that high-pitched voice. In the Middle East, eunuchs were commonly used as servants to women because they had no sex drive, they had no ability to have sex, so they were perfect candidates to work with women, concubines, etc. etc. In China, eunuchs played a pretty big political role, you know, especially in the imperial court, Forbidden City, <clears throat> they were a big part of the royal court, you know, and uh, because the temper of a castrate is usually very different from that of uh, a non-castrated male, they were perfect diplomats in a way. And if you look at the facts, a lot of those eunuchs lived up to their 70s, oftentimes outliving males who were not castrated which is, I think is very interesting. But then, you, you know, there's a counter-argument is that eunuchs were less likely to go to war. So non-castrated males were more likely to die in a battle than uh, eunuchs, right? But still, s living up to their 70s is pretty good. And you have to keep in mind that medicine has progressed uh, quite a lot. You know, you have modern medicine, you have uh, vaccines, uh, better hygiene, which we haven't actually established before, what, 19th century? Crazy, right? Looks like being a castrate doesn't really mean you're gonna live a shorter life because of that. If those guys lived up to their 70s, might you live, and live even a little longer than that in today's society? You, you never know. Think that diet and exercise is much more important for your health than taking supplement hormones that will do more damage to you than diet and exercise, to be honest. If you're worried about possibility of developing osteoporosis, you know, there are better supplements you can take for that than uh, artificial hormones. Calcium, take uh, some calcium. After being on no testosterone for, well, like, Oh, seven years and if we include two years on estrogen that's that's nine I haven't developed any bonds issues so far will that always be the case probably not I will have to deal with that eventually and what do I do then do I go on testosterone when my osteoporosis develops I have no idea to be honest and right now I'm thinking that I do not wish 
to give any money to uh, the industry that preys upon miners, that preys upon vulnerable people and uh, makes money off of that. If I spend my money on those hormones, guess what that money goes to big farmers pockets, their deep, deep pockets. And I don't want my money to go there. You know, it's sort of like, I don't want to pay taxes because some of the shit mo money gets used for with the taxes is, it's not shit I support. And I f think it's the same thing here where I don't want my money to go to the industry, which profits from that. So, uh, you ain't getting any of my money. Fuck you. No hormones. But what happens if eventually um, I'll be told that, you know, here's the thing. At this point, you either have to die or take those hormones. Will I sing the same tune? I don't know. It's, uh, it's easy to say when you're sitting here comfortably uh, and it's not happening right now. But when that becomes a thing, when I, if I said no right now, and then in order to, you know, feel like I have to save my life, would take hormones, that would make me a hypocrite. So, I'm not making any promises here, because honestly, you can't possibly know how you will react in a situation like that. I don't know. But in general, I think that me just being me and accepting what has happened and taking responsibility for that is the best thing I can do. Because I'm not going to fool myself and pretend like I can fix that, like I can go back to being a normal man. I just, there's no going back. So I take responsibility for my action. If I develop health issues because of the decision I've made, that is on me. I take responsibility for that. Again, I'm not telling you what you should do. If you're really unsure, you can test waters, right? You can go on testosterone for a while, or go on estrogen for a while, see how that makes you feel. Try taking no hormones for a while, see how that makes you feel, you know? The, my point is, just keep in mind, there is no healthy solution, and you have to choose between the better of three evils, really. That's what it boils down to. And take time making that decision because it's not a decision that is easy to make and I'm not going to uh, be preaching that oh taking no hormones is the best solution. I'm not saying what's the best solution for everyone. I'm saying what works for me. What's the best choice for me and that doesn't have to be the best choice for everyone else, right? Anyway, I will see you in the next video very soon, actually. I'm having a special guest on this channel, so uh, you can look forward to that. Ciao. Non-castrated males were more likely to die in a bottle. In a bottle? In a battle. <laughs> My uncle Jimmy drowned in a bottle. <laughs>